Now, where to begin? The first thing you need to know is that Norway has the highest number of electric cars per capita than anywhere else in the world. The second thing you need to know is that to travel in one 3,000 kilometres to the Arctic Circle in the middle of winter is considered absolutely ridiculous. And thirdly, what role do Christmas-themed oven mitts have to play in all of this? Sasha, what are the odds you wear these oven mitts to keep your hands warm for the rest of the trip? One in seven. Alright, three, two, one. Three! <laughs> to pull off this electric arctic mission, it would take the type of team that grabs life by the balls, punches it in the face and then jumps into the Norwegian sea afterwards. The kind of guys who are well coordinated, have a sense of style and it can look death in the eye who drink from life's sweet nectar. One for the road. Mm, that's totally vodka. When things get tough, they stick together, they look for solutions, and they greet them all with big, wide, wholesome open arms. Yes, please. There's a big storm rolling in as well. They're afraid of absolutely nothing. <laughs> They speak their mind and give us all a reality check. And it's raining the whole time. Fully self-inflicted. Check what time it is. That's me, by the way. 2.30 in the afternoon. Yep. These four are the chosen ones. Let me take you to the snowy wonderland. And with great care and tact, gliding ever so gracefully over the ice and snow, we're squeezing you in and bringing you along for the ride as we reach full circle into the Arctic and back again. So I've rocked up into Oslo, minus two degrees, I'm in t-shirt and shorts, and my bag doesn't rock up for another 24 hours. Everyone's looking at me like, what the f is this guy doing? So without my bag or pants, and having done a cold dash to the hotel, I found some warm clothes and headed straight to Oslo's Winter Wonderland in Spikersuppa. It's famous for its ice skating, hearty food, and enough Christmas spirit to make you believe in Santa again. And with a little piece of carpet and a good amount of gravity, it was now time to slide into a Norwegian winter. It was way quicker than expected. <laughs> way quicker than expected. Oh, the incoming children. Watch out. Hold the salmon. There's one thing, as walking through, it's beautiful, but you've got to look out for the birds in those trees. You can't see them because of the fairy lights. But five minutes ago, I just got shot on by like two birds. So walk away from the trees. Now, doused with some fresh karma, the boys all finally arrived with our new sweaters and it was time to make our first stop, douchebags. We snagged ourselves some new bags and then with great haste, we slid our way back to the feet. Charged and ready to take these fine gentlemen into the Arctic Circle were our two very new and very electric Mercedes EQC 400s. New Mercedes all electric cars. As is it's fully electric. 3,000 kilometer road trip? No. 3,000. 3,000 kilometer road trip. I don't think we covered it. No, no, and it's all electric, by yeah. the way. All and we're in Norway. Mercedes. We're in Norway. Ready engines, boys. You hear that? Nothing. They're electric. Wait, so uh, what do we put in our mats? Pappy makes a good point. You see, the night before, we called a sweater meeting to gather our collective navigation knowledge and determine the treacherous path that lay ahead. We're starting in Oslo and travelling towards the town of Trondheim. Charging the cars as we go, we're going to make our way towards the port town of Bordeaux. This is where we're catching a ferry that's going to take us straight over and onto the Lofoten Islands. The Arctic Circle is a great big circle around the North Pole that's about 7,500 square miles and covers around 4% of the Earth's surface. Lofoten is an archipelago in the northern part of Norway and is known for some of the most jaw-dropping and epic scenery in the world. It also experiences one of the world's largest elevated temperature anomalies relative to its high latitude. That should give us some hope that we're not going to completely freeze to death. How many douchebags are going to be in this car? Um, well, we got five douchebags, me and Sasha, so we got seven. 
Yep, that's a lot of douchebags. And to get a handle and hit start on things, we're going to have to turn our attention to life on the road for the next 10 days. That means taking it slow, taking in some of those sights, and really getting a taste for that Norwegian culture. Isn't all crystals like moon crystals because everything is interconnected and every atom is from space and we've all come from one, so like... You guessed it. We're on the road. We're finally on the road and starting to settle into things. Three hours into the road trip. How well we pass the time and respond to challenges is going to determine our success. Uh, we're going to try and find a charging spot right now. For us, our biggest challenge is figuring out how to keep our cars charged on such a long and arctic journey. Good and... Charging, we're talking about charging. He's draining the battery of our car. Okay, let's talk charging. Plugs, ports, apps, all the things batteries. There's a bit to take in. Oh, beautiful. That works. So we just had the car plugged in for the past 20 <laughs> minutes and our charge was going down for some reason. Turns out we have to get an app. Rookie mistake. Very it's, much. Seems a like it's mistake. drawing power. Yeah. We're giving think, power to the Yeah, brain. we started at 86%, now we're at 85%. With batteries now fully recharged and some beautiful departing words by Sasha. We thought it would be a good idea to do a team safety check just before heading out on the road. Josiah hasn't had much sleep. I've gotten like eight hours of sleep in the past two days. Why? Just three hours? No, but, but why? Just because I don't sleep. <laughs> He's on his phone all night. Why are you driving? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the road? Uh, I'm okay. I'm good. <laughs> crazy. We all got to put one in. Oh. Dude, not right now. It gets you so dizzy. It gets, you get a big head rush from that. Yeah. Again, well, if you see any place to stop Woo! and you want to take photos. With Josiah raising a number of red flags, we all had some nervous energy heading into the most remote parts of our drive. Oh, you don't see me no good no more. Crushed it. Electric cars are, it's interesting how much you have to start thinking about the charging ports. Heaps. Because... Yeah, this one is off in the middle of nowhere. With an Arctic winter now becoming very much our reality and Norway's remote wilderness feeling very real, what we were getting ourselves into was finally starting to hit home for each and every one of us. Deep in snow. Like, <laughs> don't, we don't have snow tyres. This is not good. This is a disaster. This is not good. So it's team meeting time, and what are we? Uh, what are we trying to work out? All right. So this is the thing. When we started this trip, <laughs> we had uh, five hours of daylight in Oslo, and for some reason, just till now, we looked at <laughs> the weather, and we only have one hour of daylight in Lofoten. <laughs> With only around 45 minutes of daylight per day up in the Lofoten Islands. This was now our reminder that we should not underestimate an Arctic winter. Watch the tree. What, look at this. He's going to go straight into the tree. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the second? That's the, sec the tree. second <laughs> second tree that's been hit with that drone. Uh, we got a car. Back. All right, I'm going to just like. Uh, With a few close calls, mostly from Josiah, and a newfound respect for winter, we're going on to make some moves into the Arctic Circle and onto the Lofoten Islands, all under the cover of darkness. It's morning, and we're on our way to Bordeaux. We've just uh, rocked in to a little town called Bjork. We're here in, uh, in Bordeaux at the other uh, ferry. We're about to, uh, to make our way to Moskenes. The ferry will take around three hours and take us straight into the Lopatan Islands. Next up, Moskines. Currently in the, the, uh, the Arctic. Across the line. Across the line. The lights of uh, Bordeaux. We're heading to the Arctic. Can hear anything you're saying? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
arriving into Lofferton feels wild and beautifully surreal. We're low on charge and supplies, so we're going to stock up. We're then going to head north to find our lodge somewhere in the islands. Because Norway is so expensive, we are in a grocery store. We're going to stock up for the week. What the heck is this? Gerlot Mums. <laughs> There's something beautiful and majestic about a still and calm winter. The snow gently falling outside. Everything so still you can hear your own footsteps, or like this bird passing by. And a perfect moment to tuck away indoors and stay warm and toasty in our cabin. It really doesn't get much more wholesome than a home-cooked meal and sharing a drink with friends all while wearing Christmas sweaters. It was really starting to feel like home. Heck, we even made a less than desirable gingerbread house. At least this is a bit of laundry. I need to put it away. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I'm living with animals. So while tucked away in our cabin, message came through from our relatives asking for a Christmas card. We knew just the image to take and the place to go and get it. It's really so beautiful here. We're about to shoot our 2020 Snowtown cover. Look at this giant thing. Day six of wearing <laughs> in a row. Look at this place. <laughs> and just like that, we had our heartwarming image. So if you want to know how icy it's been, that we've been driving on, these are the roads right now. From here on, we're throwing ourselves into anything we can find, or daylight for that matter, diving headfirst into a Lofferton winter and knowing you only ever regret the things that you don't do. I guess you know what to do it again. <laughs> That's right, Sash. Like we said, no regrets. So let's put those nipples away and get things cleaned up because we have a long way back to Oslo and it's time to bring this little film full circle. Feeling fresh, looking clean, and with a couple of last minute checks, we were ready to start the journey back to Oslo in two days instead of three. That's because one of these stud muffins had a hot date, so we all took one for the team. So after a full week in the Arctic Circle, we have now experienced sun for the first time. This is our first time seeing sun. Sometimes you don't realise how much something means to you until it's gone. Having spent the last week in darkness, this was such a monumental moment. A monumental occasion. We're so close, it's at the tips of the it's, it's right there. It's, it's right below the horizon. Looking back, it's obvious to see the stuff that really matters. It's our shared experiences and all our little in-between moments that now add up to create this big, beautiful story worth telling. These are the 1% moments that add up to create something truly special. 1%. So know this, nothing is certain, you always have a choice. Oh, I forgot my towel. And your story is unique. I reckon we could start our own top here. Let's do it. Let me treat you going up
We have gone nowhere. <laughs> I just wants to, and just wants to show off his, his, his photo. photo that see he my number is way better. <laughs> Trying to get back to Oslo in two days instead of three days. We woke up at 4:30 in the morning. I hardly talk. I'm so tired. <laughs> You'll get destroyed on social media. Wait to uh, wait to put the engine cool in. And the windshield wiper fluid thing. A lot of it's pretty intense. Because yeah. it might be the only light that we get for the next six days. Six days. <laughs> they just walked up to the counter and I was like, give me the strongest snooze you have so we could all just try it. Emmett, move! Move! like two gingers when I put this hat on. Hey, who are matching this morning? <laughs> I 